Hi there, Dave here with the second of two videos about debugging a Python program in PyCharm. And so I assume that we've already downloaded the right software, 3.5.1 of Python and 1.2 version of the Community Edition. And I have build 145. 844. Someplace close around there, at least the 1.2. And then I downloaded this guy, the calculator that we're going to use. It could be anything, it doesn't really matter. So here we go. We talked about the idea <coughs> that when we run, when we run, it's going to run fast and it uses a different interpreter. So if I say run main procedures, it's going to run fast and it's not going to pay attention to the debug part. Where if I run it this way, it's going to do exactly the same thing as this one, unless I do something over in this little trough here. And what I do inside the trough, let's go ahead and put numbers in it, is I click it and I put a little dot there and that tells it where it's going to stop. If you don't tell it to stop, it's not going to stop. It's only going to stop to take input in, but it's not going to stop any time after that. You could have stopped. You could walk through the code. You can walk in. You can walk out. You can do all these things, but you have to stop first. And so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and walk through main. So we're going to stop the code right here at the beginning. Or we could stop it at 12. Let's stop it at line 12. So what I did was clicked in the trough here on line 12. And now when I run it in debug mode, it's going to stop right there. And so let's go ahead and run it. And there it is. And so we can see inside of the debug window here that we've got NF and OutC both equals zero. It executed those two lines. It has not executed this line. So this line says that we're going to execute a function called input degrees. And we can see that input degrees is right down below us. So if we want to see it march on into input degrees, we can just step on into that code. And the way that we most effectively do that is by saying step into my code. And that's all done over here in these magic buttons. Now the magic button here is associated with this magic and these magic buttons. These all have to do with control of an iteration of the execution of main underscore procedures. When you click on one of these guys, it starts a new instance of the execution where here this controls the execution of an existing instance. So let's go ahead and walk in. Let's see. If you hold your mouse over it, it'll tell you what to do, what it will do if you click this button. Step over says, listen, I don't really want to go into input degrees. I don't want to see what's in there. I just want you to go step right in this code. Uh, step over says, don't step into my code. Don't take a look at it in there. I want you to step over that and go to the next piece of code in this particular method called main. This function, this module called main. So I am going to do that. I'm just not going to walk into input degrees. I'm going to skip it. And so I go ahead and I say no. Let's, which one was it again? Step over. There we go. And step over. Oh, it goes away. Well, what it did, you stepped over it and you said go to the next one here, but input degrees 
is asking you to input degrees, but it's not asking you here. It's asking you someplace else, right? It's asking you on a different. So where we are right now is in the debugger, and where we want to be is the council, because this is who's asking you the question. Here's the user side of the thing, and there he is. He's asking you for your input. And this has to do, this has to be input before I can actually do my step over, which is I'm trying to get to line 13. And at line 13, I'll go ahead and step into calc. So I'm going to go ahead and input the degrees. And so Fahrenheit, it's let's say it's 55. And so I enter that. And notice that since we're in debug mode, after I enter it, I go and continue what this guy said to do. Remember, I said step over. So as soon as I input that 55, it went to my next instruction to be executed, which is on line 13, which is just what I wanted it to do. Now, this time, I want to go ahead and step into calc. So... I'm going to say step in two. Well, I noticed that over here there's a couple of different. There's step into my code and there's step into. Step into says step into whatever code comes next. Next. So if it's some detailed Python method that's in some fancy library someplace, that's the code you're going to see and it's going to be confusing. You don't really mean step into whatever code comes next, no matter how deep we go in the Python little code inside of code inside of code idea what you want to see is your next code so your next code not step into so what we want to do is we want to do not that one we want to do this one step into my code and so if i hit step into my code sure enough it goes to the next executable instruction which is inside of calc now, I'm going to go ahead and see, well, what should this be? What's going on here? What is degrees F when I go ahead to make this calculation? Well, if I hold my mouse over it, it tells me that it's a float with a value of 55. I can also see that at any time that I want, if I go back over to the debugger and I look at relevant local variables, and there they are. And so I'm going to go ahead and execute that code. Now, if I say step into my code, then I know that there's really no place to step into because I'm at the inside of my code. It's just going to go back again, but that's okay. Step into when you come to the bottom means actually step up. So it means really execute the next instruction that's going to get executed. And so when we say step into my code again, it goes back up to here, which is the next executable instruction. And that also is the execution to be the execution of a function. And so what we do is we want to walk into that one again, but halfway through, we don't want to do it anymore. Notice that right here, the local variables down below are that. So we know what out C is going to be and what in F is going to be. Yeah, we better by the time we go to calculate it. And there it is. And so now we're going to pass those values into output. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to step into our code there's our code there's our code there's our code so we can see that it's going to do everything right and i don't need to execute the next instruction or any more instructions no matter how many there were behind here i just want to get out of here and go to the next one and but i want you to execute all the rest of the code so if i say step out at this point, it's going to go ahead and f execute the rest of the code, but go 
up a level to the next place that it can execute. And the next place that it can execute is that the program is done. So it will just end when I do that. But there it's come back. It's to the end of main. And now Look, now we're inside of all this stuff. We don't need to be there anymore. So anytime you want to, you can just say, hey, fire this guy. Finish this off. I don't need to see all this googly garp. So you can hit this thing with the arrows over here, and it'll just fire the program off. Once again, this has to do with the instance of the code that's running right here. And if all of a sudden I said, well, I don't want to, yeah, I really don't, not interested in seeing anything else in this thing. What I want to do is start all over. Then what I could do is go ahead and restart this version, this procedure, this version of main. So I'm not starting a new instance. I'm just starting it over. And there I have, I started it over. It's going to start right there again because that's where I put my break. So now if I just wanted to stay inside of this main and just watch it execute there, I can watch it just execute there. There is the execution of the first one. Oh, where'd it go? How come it's not working? Oh, oh, remember? The input is inputting, so I have to go over to my console side to get my input stuff taken care of before I can go debug some more. I still have to interact with the program. So don't think that the debugger is not working. Think about maybe I should be inputting something here. So I'm going to input 44. And there I've inputted it. And now sure enough it comes back to there. And now if I hit step over again, it's going to be all done. And now if I just hit this guy, it's finished. And so there we go. Play with it and see what it does. Have fun.